first of all, I am wearing a hoodie, yes. And it's not because I'm experiencing some coolness here, okay? It is 30-something degrees outside. I'm just wearing this because I'm filming a video, okay? Also, it's kind of comfy and Formula 1, so what you gonna do about it? I'm so excited because there's only one week left until race week, which is really nice. And, oh my gosh, my Sir Lewis Hamilton face has not been fizzling out at all. Also, did you know Tom Hilson has a baby? Has a, has a conscious baby? And might have a second one on his way. <laughs> what? Okay, now I'm getting videos of Loki. And I'm just like, oh, my parasocial relationship, man. I didn't need to know that information, you know. I was not keeping up with Tom Hiddleston at all. I just respect how he talks about uh, different scripts. And how he reads English differently for different contexts. I just think he's very intelligent and I like that. But now I gotta live with the fact that every time I see a clip of Loki, I have to, I, I just think this man is raising a fully conscious child. He is a dad, okay? And I don't know, like, I don't, if you get it, then you get it, okay? If you don't, talk to the hand. So today, mostly it was chill. I just had normal classes, didn't have a huge up and down or moment, but we did start The Awakening by Kate Chopin, and we read chapter 1 to 4, and there is this specific annotation format that our teacher wants, and it's annotation, and you copy-paste the text, and then you write the page number and your annotations. Disclaimer, there will be spoilers, but also... Like, y'all probably ain't gonna read The Awakening. Let's be real. Unless you're taking AP Lit for some reason. The scene opens with a parrot in a cage chirping Allez-vous. Some, some French, okay? I'm not, gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna attempt it. It's just this. I'll put it up on the screen. He could speak a little Spanish and also a language which nobody understood, which I think is French. Unless... It was the mockingbird that hung on the other side of the door. So it might be just bird chirping or the parrot just repeating French and they don't they just don't understand French. So it opens with that and we get introduced to our first character, Mr. Pontelier. And he his last name is giving French. So we have yada yada yada. I'm not gonna go through each chapter personally, but okay, there is Mr. Pontelier and Mrs. Pontelier, and they have two children who's five and four years old. And Mrs. Pontelier's name is Edna, and Edna enters the scene with someone named Robert. Who is Robert? I thought Robert was her kid because they were playing out in the beach. Nuh uh, Robert lives in the main house, okay? The Pontelliers live in the cottage next to the main house. Bro has a nanny that has a fancy main house in a small town. And his family was sort of poor before because it was supposed to be a luxury that his nanny had a house, but now he's not. He's sort of modest, but he's sort of well off, you know, ish. Because he can't afford cigars because it's too expensive. Robert and Mrs. Pontelier like talk, yada, 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 yada. And then Mr. Pontelier is like, Babs, I'm gonna go to the bar because I am a man and that's what they do in that old century style. So Mr. Pontelier goes and Mrs. Pontelier is like, Should we pack for dinner? And he's like, mm, I have 10 bucks in my pocket. Maybe, dear. He doesn't come back until 11. He's just gonna drink with his friends, just play around. Well, his wife is just in his house. It was 11 o'clock that night when Mr. Pontelier returned from Clint's hotel. He was in an excellent humor and high spirits and very talkative. His entrance awoke his wife, who was in bed and fast asleep when he came in. He talked to her while he undressed, telling her anecdotes and bits of news and gossips. And then uh, something happened. He thought it was very discouraging that his wife, who was the sole object of his existence, Invinced so little interest in things which concerned him and valued so little his conversation. I literally just was like, he's just perturbed because his fragile masculinity is hurt because his wife won't listen to him. <laughs> guess what? The teacher agreed. He was like, mm, yeah. And guess what? Mr. Pontelier marches over to say goodnight to his children, comes back out and lies to his wife. He goes, Edna, I think... One of our kids have a fever. 
and nuns like I literally put them to sleep. They had no sense of fever. Mr. Pondley already hurt, already hurt that his wife ain't respecting him as a man of this house. Goes, nuh uh, you are doing nothing for this house. You are neglecting our children, and you are. Not doing the duty as a mother. The audacity. Anyways, Edna goes up and oh my gosh, she comes back rolling her eyes. Mr. Ponsier is just like, I said what I said, and he goes to sleep. While poor Edna has tears falling down her eyes. Okay, she goes out in distress and she cries while mosquitoes bite her, and her mental pain goes to her physical pain of mosquito bites. Mm hmm. So that's that. So you see a little glimpse into the life of ordinary married life. But Edna's like, I never had a boyfriend or a husband to compare. Uh, the townspeople love Mr. Pontelier, okay? Mr. Pontelier is the kind, Mr. Pontelier is kind and nice to everyone. So the elders, the nurse, the kids, everybody loves him. So Edna's like, mm, I see this side of him where he is super mean to me. You're yelling at me saying I have no words. I'm not a good mother. On the other hand, during the day, it's like he has undying love for her. And you can clearly see because he describes her as the most valuable position that he has. But he also is stuck in that old set, old, old mindset with the fragile masculinity. Maybe if you didn't slouch and maybe if you lift and straighten your back, have some pride in yourself, look inwards before you judge outwards, babes. And was. So that was that, and then the next day, Mr. Pontelier decides to go to a go to a business trip. Okay, he's bye bye, and uh, Mrs. Pontelier goes and goes like, "Hi, hey, that's my husband there." Bye, and then we get introduced to, to this character named Adele Ratting Rattignoli? I don't know Adele. Okay, and she is supposed to be gorgeous, drop dead gorgeous. Okay, she says there was nothing subtle or hidden about her charms. Her beauty was all there, flaming. And apparent, the spun gold hair that combed or confining pin could restrain, the blue eyes that were like nothing but sapphires, two lips that pouted, that were so red, one could only think of cherries or some other delicious crimson fruit in looking at them. So she is like a big deal. She is married to a husband, and she pops out babies every two years. So she has been married for like、mm, seven years. So she already has three kids, and she has one more on the way. But then, apparently, Mister Pontelier is part of the Creole, which is a mix of the French, which even the parrot has already shown me. Okay, French, Spanish, English. Period. Apparently, the town sort of is very open. They are very unabashed when sharing their true feelings. They're what they are vibing with. So Adele is very shameless. Okay, and a.、Uh, Edna is shocked because when she first listens to what Adele is saying, Adele is l- recounting her childbirth experience very frankly, being like, "Oh my gosh, it was so horrific. This happened." She was just and she was just out in the open sharing her fellow hardships with her fellow woman, and that's the thing. Edna is still not used to it. Okay, she was from I think Missouri. She's like, "Oop, I always had like shame when discussing that," but. She's trying to get used to it, trying to get used to the circle and everything, and that's when it ends. My predictions still remain the same. This is about this girly pop. She has expressed her, the feeling of oppression. She feels like even if her husband is giving such love, there's this still this like side of her husband that is sort of tipping the scale and negating the positives. That were happening, and I think she just decides, I'm sick and tired of this oppression. Okay, I'm gonna break free from the chain, and sort of develop my desire. I still think there's something involved with the ship. I think she's still gonna go out because why are they mentioning the beach so often? And then Robert, okay, Robert and Miss Pontelier. I'm not trying to stir up some stuff, but there is something fishy. Okay. Robert only comes down in the summer. There is some magic. There is something fishy going on in the summer air. Okay. So either Robert and Edna's gonna cheat and sleep with each other, or Mr. Pontelier, who went on a business trip, he's gonna be like.、Oh. Also, Mr. Pontelier says that Edna is not a 
mother woman like oh my gosh this is also something that you can only see through the female gaze in short mrs pontelier was not a mother woman the mother woman seemed to prevail at the that summer at grand isle it was easy to know them fluttering about with extended protecting wings when any harm real or imaginary threatened their precious broad they were women who idolized their children, worshipped their husbands, and esteemed it a holy privilege to efface themselves as individuals and grow wings as ministering angels. And does not fit for the women type. So Mr. Pontelier also has that. Mm. So I feel like Mr. Pontelier's gonna cheat on Edna. Maybe. Maybe. Okay? Because so far, he's been loving during the day. But also... After the bar, he goes He goes to the bar for hours. He yells at Anna. He looks at her and is like, she is not fit to be the mother of my children. So I told the predictions to my teacher and my teacher was like, that, half of that's right. Oh, which half? Which half? So I'm sticking to my 100% because at least 50% of that's right. And I know for sure, okay, Kate is going to put something about the oppressed female desires. That was my feelings towards the awakening, the first four chapters. BTW, the first four chapters is the first 10 pages of this book. We'll update you. Today I'm doing this a bit earlier because it's Friday and it just felt like closure. I wasn't doing anything a lot. I hope you had an amazing day. Bye.